how God is a faithful God. Yes. Just think about sometime you maybe even before, prior, or you know, whatever it is in your life, maybe you're not always faithful to God, right? Yes. Uh, step away, step aside, whatever, make mistakes. But God was still bringing you forth. He, he wants you. He wants you. He wants that you will step into the path of righteousness. He wants you to, that you will step in the path Father, that Father has for you. But he wants that. And so sometimes when we step aside, God will kind of redirect us right Amen. and he will move us okay okay my daughter okay my son you move this way and so god is faithful and so he, this is his character the faithfulness right Amen. but our part is playing also a big part which is what commitment Amen. commitment commitment to do what god calls us to do Lord. see when we come to jesus we repent of our sins, right? Amen. And we say, Lord, I'm not worthy of you. But because of your mercy, because of your love, and because of your compassion, you saved me. So I'm giving you my heart, Lord. And I'm giving you not just my heart, but I'm giving you my life. Amen. And because I don't have to die in my sins. I can live and arise in you and be this new man or woman of God who you called me to be. That my life is not belongs to me no more, but my life belongs to you, Lord. You use this life for your glory, for your kingdom. And that takes commitment. Commitment, dedication. The Lord is saying to us today, now follow me. See, why should you die and you sin? There's no need for that. Lord calling up and he is raising up his army, his people in this last days to be the voice in the land. To walk in the miracle signs and wonders. The scripture says that the works what Jesus done that you should do also. Amen. So the works what Jesus done then we should do even greater works. Amen. So God wants to raise you up for such a time as this. But we have to play or do our part. And that part dedication. That part is the commitment. No matter what you just, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances is, you just press forward. Press forward. Press forward. Press forward. Press forward. You don't feel like prayer in the morning, but you still press forward. Press forward. You not feel like to come into the church maybe in the evening on Tuesday night. See, God is reward those who is diligently seeking Him. Because when you come in the presence of the Lord, in a, in a corporate of anointing, God will refresh you. His word will bring you the strength. And you, be, you receive the strength and become like a fresh and strong and Lord and the power of His might. And you will see that. You will see that. That commitment. That dedication. To serve your Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Well praise God. So just get, um, get ready to receive the word of God this morning. In Jesus name. So pastor is here. And we thank God for this man of God. And we just receive the word through him and just trust the Lord that God will use this man of God to speak to you, to speak to each of us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Open. Thank you.
very much. Praise the Lord. How's everyone doing today? Everybody all right? Glory to God. I'm so honored. You know, it's, I'm a, uh, it's in my heart to visit my homeland again. It's in, my, it's in my heart to visit Alabama again, to carry this healing message to Alabama once again. I don't, and I was, I don't, I have, I'm, I'm trying to see what day would the Lord have me to do that. And because uh, we have to set up and we have to get, this time we're going to put our proper advertising there so that everyone in the, everyone around there will know that we're there. Last time, when we went the last time, we didn't, really put out much advertising. We told a few people, and we thought that they would tell people, but it don't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Amen. So this time, when we prepare to go to Alabama, this time we're going to tell, we're going to put it in the news. We're going to put it on Indicator Daily. And on the, you know, we're going to put it in Decatur Daily. Decatur Daily. We're going to ask, we're going to share it in the newspaper. Amen. That uh, God is bringing us back there once again for another healing, prayer and healing uh, revival. Amen. That's going to be a, it's going to be a powerful, powerful uh, experience for a lot of people because, see, there's a lot of people that are sick. There are a lot of people that are hurting. Amen. When we was there the last time, we had uh, quite a few people that got healed and got delivered. You know, God touched lives. And God has put on my heart once again to go back to Alabama again to carry the message once again. Amen. And also to uh, to, to make sure everyone there, all of my family and everyone that, that is okay too. But anyway, and I want to introduce my daughter once again to her other part of the family. So anyway, we're, going to, we're preparing to come back to Alabama. You that are with us from Alabama, we're preparing to come back to see you once again. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so now, I want to, uh, to let you know that We've been teaching on this message here since December. And you know, it's almost back December again. <laughs> oh, God. I can't imagine what God's going to give me for next year. Amen. Because uh, I, I've been faithful to this message that God had given me for this year. And in other words, I've held to the commitment that God placed in my heart to share with you. And I've come through different aspects you know, different uh, episodes, amen, but yet we're focusing on the same thing, restoring the image of God back into the heart of man. Restoring the image of God back into the heart of man, amen. When God gave me this message, I didn't know that some other people had been preaching this message also, and so, uh, uh, and then when I started preaching this, people started saying he's preaching someone else's message, but that was not true. That wasn't true. I wasn't preaching someone else's message. I preach what God gave me, and I'm still doing it. Amen. And so what I want you to know that today, we're preaching the same message. Restore, restore your, uh, uh, rest, re, renewing the image of God back into the heart of man. Amen. Renew the commitment of the vision that God gave man. And renew the commitment of the vision that God gave man. Cause see, once the once the, the once you the commitment is uh, is become a reality in your heart, now God is going to begin to bring that vision to 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 the forefront. You begin to see what God is doing. Let me pray, Father. I come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that you have given us once again to share your word. And Father, we ask you now, O oh my Lord, O oh yes, Lord. We ask you right now, Father, that you would touch every heart under the sound of my voice. And Father, may every word that come forth out of my heart today come forth under the anointing of the spirit of the living God to lift burdens, destroy yokes, and rest, restore with a restoring force. I thank you for it now, Father. 
in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I ask you that you will anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we come with you now to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. And all that grieve that sin, amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Welcome to the new life of Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. Where Jesus Christ is glorified. We want to thank God for this opportunity once again. But now, I want you to open up your hearts today because God may want to speak to your heart today. Amen. Concerning your commitment, concerning your status in His, in Him. Amen. Because you see, if we don't watch out, if we don't, if we don't uh, pay close attention, there's a deceiver that is working overtime trying to manipulate the body of Christ, trying to destroy the heart of man through deception. Amen. Be not deceived, for God is not marked. For whatsoever the Bible says, a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. I want you to hold your heart up before God and say, God, if there's anything in my life, if there's anything in my heart that is preventing you from, from, from accomplishing your purpose, your plan, the vision you have placed within me, Father, let it be exposed. Let it be exposed. I want to see your will carried out in earth as it is in heaven in my life. Amen. Let the commitment that I've made to you in my early days of walking with you, Father, let that vision not let that vision not fall to the ground. Let that vision not give in, not give way. But let that vision come to pass. Amen. Let that vision come to pass. Because when that vision comes to pass, that shows that, that show me that the word of God is still working on your behalf. See, God said he would, like my wife said, God said he would never do what? He would never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Glory to God. Amen. And so now I want to just, I want to just, uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, in, uh, in 1 Corinthians, no, excuse me, 2 Corinthians. Amen. In 2 Corinthians, let's look here for a second. Uh, do I want to go there first? Do, 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 do. No, let's go to Genesis chapter 1 first. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Because we're still talking about restoring the image of God back to the heart of man. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice what he says here. And, and God said, let us do what? Make man in our image after our likeness. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Amen. And let them and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God said, so God created man in his own image, and after his and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now notice what it goes on to say. Very powerful. And God blessed them. And God blessed them. Amen. That, I'm telling you, when God blessed them, that means that every need was met. There was no lack. There was no insufficiency. There was no sickness. There was no diseases. They was blessed by the creator of all things. Amen. They were blessed. Amen. And so now we see here, we see here that, and God said, and, and God blessed them, and God said, let them have, let, let, let them be fruitful and multiply. In other words, God want to bring forth more blessed people. <laughs> you are blessed, you are blessed people today. Glory to God. You are blessed people today. But you know what? Your blessings come to 
It's come to pass when you begin to honor your commitment. How many of you have made a commitment to God in your life before? And how many of you are still working on that commitment that you made to God? Or how many have you forgotten the commitment that you made to God? Amen. A lot of us, we make those commitments that early in our Christian walk because we're so excited. Amen. You remember what he said in the book of Isaiah chapter 6? Who shall I send and who will go for us? And then the Bible said, then said I, hear my, send me, I'll go. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6, I think verse number 8, something like that. Amen. How many of y'all said that prayer? And, and you and when you read that and you and you made that statement before God? Amen. A lot of us have, huh? Amen. But you see, even though we made that statement, so many have turned away from that commitment that they made. Amen. In other words, they made their statement based on the vision that God placed in their heart concerning their destiny, but they did not carry forth that vision because they lost sight of their destiny. Woo! Glory to God. They lost sight of their destiny. And God want to bring you back. God want to restore that image that he gave you back from the beginning of your, of your walk with him. Amen? Because not, not all of us was walking with him from, the, from birth. None of us was. We didn't even know him from birth. Amen? But as we came of age, that's when we began to know him. That's when we began to understand him. That's when we began to uh, 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 follow his teachings. And then eventually we said, Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died for my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. How many of us did that? We all did that. Amen. We all, we all did that. Amen. So now we, we, we made a commitment to God. God, whatever you want me to do, whatever you say, God, I will honor you. I will do it. And how many of us have, have done that? And how many of us have kept that commitment? Amen. Amen. I got a scripture. I, not a scripture. I, I got a definition here. I, I got some scriptures too. But right now I'm going to show you. I'm going to deal with a definition first. Amen. The state, of, the state or quality of being uh, dedicated to a cause or activity, etc., the company or commitment of quality. Dedication, this is a definition that we've got for, for commitment. Is that dedication, devotion, glory to God, and then a loyalty, and faithfulness, fidelity, bond, adherence, Tenderness, the commitment to her studies. Just like you make you 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 in study and you commit it to your studies. Amen. And then continue undiminished. As you continue, your work will not diminish. But when you begin to fall back on your commitment, that's when you begin to lose sight of the purpose that you made the commitment for. The vision that God gave you all of a sudden because you begin to withdraw from your steadfastness, you begin to lose sight, you begin to lose focus all of a sudden, that vision began to diminish. God doesn't want that vision to diminish in you. God wants that vision to be firm, to be to be firm in you. God wants that vision to come to be strong in you. He wants you to see yourself. He wants you to see yourself advancing. Amen. Commitment. Commitment is what? Transform the promise into reality. I'm going to say that again. Commitment is what conform, is what transforms the promise into reality. Amen. The promise that God made to you, as you continue in the commitment that God has given you, amen, how are you going to continue in the commitment that God has given you if you have lost sight of the image of God that's in you? Woo! If you lost sight of the image of God that's in you, then you will not be able to step into that stage of transformation that the vision that God gives you will be able to come to pass because you've lost sight. You've lost, you've lost sight. You've turned away. You've not focused. Amen. So it said, it's, it's, this is the this is the diff, this is another definition. Amen. Commitment is what transforms the promise into reality. It is the words that speak boldly. 
How many know that to, to speak the word of God, we got when we when we're speaking the word of God, we got to be a we have to trust what we're saying that it is God speaking. Amen. What 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 Proverb three says? Trust the Lord with all thine heart and do what and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge Him and He will do what He will direct our path. Amen. So when I'm trusting God, when I'm holding fast to what God has said, I am I am keeping the vision of God before me. Amen. I'm keeping my commitment before me. Why? Because I want the image that God gave me from the beginning of my new birth to become a living reality in my heart. Not just for that moment, but for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. Commitment is what transformed the promise into reality. It is the word, the words that speak boldly of your intention. Amen. This is another. This is another one of the. This is another one of the. The the the, the, uh, the dictionary understanding of this verse of this of this word commitment. Amen. And the action which speak louder than words, it is making the time when there is none. It is making time when there is none. Coming through time. Then time after time after time. Then year after year after year. Commitment is the stuff character. Commitment is, is the stuff character is made of. Your character is made out of your commitment that you make. Even on your jobs, your character is what makes you continue in your commitment. Your attitude is what makes you continue in your commitment. Hallelujah. The power of change, the face of things, the face of things is in the daily triumph of how you deal with your how am I going to say this how you confront your enemies you have the spirit of God on the inside of you the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4 ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Whether you whether you've been become whether you've just become a Christian uh, recently or uh, renew your uh, promise to to follow him through uh, rededication or whatever, it it doesn't matter. What matters is that that you continue in your pursuit of Christ. Amen. It all it always is. is a, when you do that, you're going to find yourself drawing closer and closer to the, to the God of all creation. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms one, Psalm 37, verse number 5. Psalms 37. Yeah. Psalm 37. It's talking about commit. Are y'all there yet? Amen. Psalm 37. There we go. Let's, let, let's look at verse number Let's start verse number four. Because it, that also right down the same line. Is that delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the what? The desire of thine heart. Then verse number five says. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And what? And he shall bring it to pass. What is he going to bring to pass? He's going to bring to pass that which you committed to him. He's going to bring to pass that which you have committed to him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So people, 
What is, what is the real meaning of commitment to you? What is the real meaning of commitment to you? A commitment is something which regularly takes up some of your time. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I wanna I wanna help, but that but I have to if I commit to it, that's gonna that's gonna take my time. And and, and I don't have much time. Amen. So people don't want to commit to things because it requires them, it requires a sacrifice of them. It requires of their time. Amen. Because because an agreement because an agreement have have made a, because you 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 have agreed and have made a, and that now it become a responsibility that you have committed to. Commitment is the process of officially sending someone. See that just what if you was a judge and people had to stand before you and you have to uh, you are the final decision whether they go free or whether they go to jail. Your word will determine what shall become of that person. And then once you make that commitment, that person that you've made that commitment concerning is going to have to go through exactly what you've committed to. And what if you've been wrong through your commitment? That person would have been unjustly judged, wouldn't it? But thank God that we are a people that understand that when God gives us something, it is required of us to love. Generally speaking, we the, the more we love someone, the more committed we tend to, we, we, we want to, uh, the more we love someone, the more committed we are to them. Amen. And that's why I love you guys. I'm committed to be here every Sunday whether all y'all show up or don't show up, I'm still committed to be here for you just in case you show up. <laughs> Amen. And I'm committed to and I'm committed to the to the call of God on my life, whether 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 a large congregation or a small congregation. Amen. I'm still committed to the call of God that's upon my life. Amen. Whether people like me or dislike me has nothing to do with my commitment to God. Amen. But I, but look in in, in first king chapter six, verse six to one. First king chapter six, verse six to one, and may your heart be fully committed to the Lord, your to the Lord our God, to live by his decrees and obey his commands as at this time. Amen. God wants to restore back to you everything that the devil has stolen from you. Amen. He wants to restore back to you everything that the devil has stolen from you. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. That's a big commitment. Amen. But this is the commitment that God is requiring of us. If we're going to renew the image of God back into our hearts, then God not only wants the image of God to be renewed back in our heart, He wants the commitment that you have made to Him to become your center focus once again. 
Because the moment you begin to experience the vision that God has given you from the beginning, you're going to begin to experience the power of God once again, just like you experienced in your early day. The moment you begin to the moment you begin to refocus on, on the commitment and the vision that God gave you from the beginning, that's the, that's the time you go, because you're more wiser now than you were then concerning the word of God. You're going to begin to exceed, you're going to begin to see and experience the miracle working power of God working in and through your life. Why? Because you understand now, back then you didn't understand. But now you understand that God wants to use you in these last days. Notice what he says right here in, uh, in, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 22. In Matthew chapter 22 and, and verse number Matthew 22. There we go. And look at verse 37. Matthew 22, verse 37. Glory to God. Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto, unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Amen. This is the first and great commandment. What is the first great commandment? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. Amen. The second one is like unto it. Thou shalt love what? Thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Glory to God. Jesus replied, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is a great commandment. It means making a sacrifice. Because to love someone, you got to give up of yourself. It's a sacrifice sometimes. Amen. Because now, because you made a commitment, that means you, you, you've taken on responsibility. You've taken on responsibility. Hallelujah. Sometimes saying, sometimes, some, sometimes saying yes to God means that we have to say no to a lot of other things. You ever experienced that? Amen. To say yes to God, then all of a sudden you want to do some other things, but you said, but uh, I can't do this now because I told God that I would live, I would live, I would, I would begin to focus my life in this direction. And this right here is taking me back into the old direction in which I was going. So I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not able to, to do this now because I made a commitment. I made a commitment. And my commitment to God is a whole lot, is a whole lot uh, more uh, important than this. I would rather keep my commitment with God. Amen. Remember, God made a commitment to you too. God made a commitment to you too. Remember what he said in Isaiah 41 verse 9, verse 10? He said, I am thy God. He said, I will strengthen thee. He said, yeah, I will help thee. He said, yeah, I will uphold thee with the righteous of my right hand. And he made a commitment to you that everyone that's in sin against you shall be ashamed. He made this commitment to you. Amen. If God can hold his commitment that he made to us, then why can't we hold the commitment that we made to him? And then he, and, and then he said in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 28, verse 1, if thou shalt hearken to listen to the voice of the Lord thy God, he began to talk about how he will bless you. How he, I mean, tell you, I'm telling you, God made commitments to us that if we would only, if we would only take a, a good glimpse at the commitments that God has made, we will see that God is not a man that he shall lie, 
nor the son of man, he shall repent. Amen. Let's just look over at Deuteronomy real quick because Deuteronomy chapter chapter 28. Let's just look at this. Let's just look at these commitments real quick. Because these are things that that are that really should keep us focused on what we are, should be doing. No we said, and it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. He said, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. And he said, and all these blessings. See, these are the things that God has committed himself to concerning us. Amen. Concerning us. Amen. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessing. Blessed shall thou be in the, in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the, in the field. Blessed shall thou be in the store. In thy body. The fruit of thy body and of the and the ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy ba thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou what cometh in. And blessed shall thou be when thou what goeth out. Verse number seven. The Lord shall cause thine enemy. Now, not 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 folks. That is the Best commitment that I've, I've heard, I've read all so far. Amen. God said, God said, what do you say about your enemy? What do you say about your enemy? Amen. Rise up <laughs> verse number seven. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number seven. Read that. What it says again? The Lord will cause thine enemy that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee. How many ways? Seven. Seven. <laughs> now, 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 this commitment right here alone is worth you keeping the commitment that you made to him. Amen. Amen. Because knowing that, that God is going to be an enemy to your enemies, oh my God, that, that's, that's, worth, that's worth all the while right there. Yeah, just that one. Amen. Amen. Because see, if, if we when we when God keep his commitment, if, if if we expect God to keep his commitment, should not we keep our commitment? Amen. He said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Amen. And let them have dominion over all the work of our hand. And so God created him male and female, and God created them. Amen. And then God blessed him. God didn't curse him. God blessed him. That blessed, that means, that word blessed is talking about what we're talking about right here. Blessed means divine protection. Blessed means every need is met. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So when I look at this, when I, when I look at this, when I see what God is talking about here, it really just, it really just gets my attention. Because see, God want our commitment to him not to fall to the ground. And so many of us have allowed our commitments to fall to the ground. Because we've lost sight of who we are. We've, met, we've, we've lost sight of who we are. The image that God gave man from the beginning is no longer uh, seen within us. It is no longer visible in our heart. Even though even though we have received that image, but we have not allowed that image to, to, to spring forth or to come forth. And it's time that we begin to acknowledge God. Father, I, 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 I've done everything that I thought was right. I've made the commitments that I never was able to keep. Now, Father, I'm repenting of my past commitments that I was not able to keep. And I'm asking you to forgive me and restore unto me the image that you gave man from the beginning. Then, Father, restore my commitment to you, to serve you, to follow you, to trust you with all my heart, that I will not lean to my own understanding. But in all my ways, I was acknowledge you because I trust you. I'm committed to you. Yeah.
Yeah. Hallelujah. Commitment is a powerful tool. Can I take you back to that? That, that, that one definition? Commitment is what transformed the promise into reality. See, see when, we, when we hold fast to that commitment, that commitment is going to transform the promise that God gave us into reality. In other words, as you hold fast to the commitment that you have given, God's word that you have received and understand is going to begin to produce in your life the promises of God. I want the promise of God be renewed in my life. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. I want to see your glory. Amen. Paul, the, Paul, the apostle Paul wrote that for those whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. In Romans chapter 8, verse number 29. You see, if we're going to walk in his image, then we got to be transformed more to his image. And remember what he said in, in, in remember what he said in, in Romans chapter, chapter 12, verse number 1, that I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. See, I have to make a commitment. I have to make a commitment. I'm, I, I got to present my body as a living sacrifice. That's a commitment. Amen. As a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is my reasonable service. See, that's a commitment that I'm having to, that, that God is asking for. Amen. That's a commitment. So that's, so, so that's a, a worthy goal, isn't it? Don't you think if God will require this of you, are you willing, are you able to comply to that commitment? God wants us to be holy. God wants us to be, to stand before him. Are you, would you be willing to commit your heart to him, your life to him? Say, Father, I commit my life to you as a living sacrifice. Amen. Would you be willing to stand before a holy God, to declare what he has said, Declare what he has do, what he has done, Amen. Knowing that that he will confirm the word because you're stepping to the the realm of, of transformation. You're about to be transformed. You're about to be changed. You're about to become like a new. You're about to become a new creature, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God foreordained that you should walk therein. Remember, old things. Passed away. Now all those that old life, that that old thoughts, that that old way of living, that old condemnation spirit, that have that have kept you from fulfilling your your destiny, that have kept you out of your, from fulfilling your commitment to God. All of a sudden, because you have uh, allowed the Spirit of God to speak to your heart, and you recommitted your life to the vision, to the to the vision that God gave man from the beginning. Now all of a sudden, you find yourself. No longer, no longer bark down with pressures. But all of a sudden you find the peace of God that's a passive all understanding begin to rest upon you and those burdens, those weights that you used to carry around upon your shoulder, <clears throat> all of a sudden they're being lifted because of the anointing. Amen. Glory to God. They're being lifted because of the anointing. You're no longer bound by the things of your past. You're no longer held captive by the, by, the, by, the, by the lifestyle that you live. Because God said, old things are what? They are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. You are now a new creature created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, you, God is good. See, that's what, that's what shapes us. When we, understand, when we yield to God, when we yield to the Spirit of God, the Word of God begins to shape us. It begins to, begin to mold us 
it began to frame us into the image and his likeness, into the image and the likeness of his son Jesus. Amen. What? How that happen? When you begin to yield to the will of God, when you begin to, to when you begin to hold fast to the commitment that you made to God, all of a sudden that commitment began to transform you. Remember that definition of that word commitment. I'm gonna read it one more time. Commitment is what transformed the promise into reality. Oh God. That's, the, that's one of the definitions to the word commitment. Commit, commitment is what transformed the promise into reality. It is the words that speak. That's why it's so important that we, that we walk by faith, not by sight, because as we begin to speak, our words begin to take on meaning. And this is what God is expecting to see in us. Hallelujah. This is what God is expecting to see in us. God's expecting to see change. God's expecting change. Hallelujah. Because that word began to it begins shaping us, molding us, framing us into the image of and to the image of God and the likeness of his dear son. Amen. We we will not we'll not have the same glory that he had, but we're gonna have the glory that God meant for you to receive. You will experience something like you never experienced before. Your atmosphere around you gonna begin to be transformed because you choose to accept the 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 the, the the image that God gave you from the beginning, you choose to return back to that image. In other words, back to your first love. And all of a sudden, you begin to experience the presence and the power of Almighty God. And you know what that's going to bring about? Let's look at first, let's look at Philippians chapter 5. Philippians chapter 5. In Philippians chapter 5. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 5 is right after Ephesians. Chapter 2, I mean. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Now let's look at verse number 5, 6, and 7. And we might read a couple more, I don't know. But let's read those first. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the frame, who being in the frame of God, Thought is not robbery. To be in the form of God, thought is not robbery to be equal with God. And made of himself of no reputation. And took upon himself mm, the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, notice what he said in verse number 8, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. Amen. So when you begin to yield to the image of God that's in your heart, that's in, that he's given you, then you want to yield to a spirit of humility. Because when you begin to, when you begin to, to, when you begin to restore the image that God gave you, and the character and the, and the commitment that God placed in your heart from the beginning, as you begin to renew that image of God that He gave you and reacquaint yourself to the commitment that you have made with Him, all of a sudden you're stepping into a realm of power 
that God intends for you to walk in as a child of God. But the devil, uh, the devil uh, 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 pulled you away from because he knew that it, had you have understood what God was calling you into, that you would not, that he would not be able to, to, to stop you from accomplishing the things that God places in your heart. Because in that in that image that God gave you from the beginning is the is the the, the anointing and the presence of Almighty God, and in that and in that commitment that you made is the power to carry out the vision that God gave you from the beginning. Mm. Woo! Hallelujah! Woo! Right. Oh, glory to God! Whoa, oh, my goodness! Are y'all getting this? Because, see, you see, you see, if you lose sight of your commitment, then the image that God placed in you from the beginning is just another image. <laughs> but if you hold fast to the commitment, when the enemy comes against you, he's not going to see you because of the commitment to the image that God gave you. <clears throat> All that he can see is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Amen. And the vision. I like what Rebecca said. Though the vision tarry. Wait for it. Because it is surely coming. It shall not fail. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when we look at this thing. We see what God is saying to us. We know that, we know that we're in the right place. And we know that we are following his purpose and his plan. Why? Because if we are being transformed into the image of Christ, then you are becoming more like Christ, not like the devil. You're not going to be transformed in the image of Christ and start walking like the devil. If you take on the image of Christ, then you're going to be transformed into his likeness. Amen? How is that going to be? Because you reacquainted yourself with the image that God gave men from the beginning. And you came and you and you and you became uh, uh, re you reacquainted yourself with the commitment that you gave God from the beginning. God, whatever you say go, I'll go. Whatever you say do, I'll do it. Now who else did that? Jesus did that. Amen. Jesus did that. Amen. Amen. And see now that's expected is 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 expected out of you, but you gotta humble yourself as Christ did. Just because you just because you got just because you come back into the you 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 reacquaint yourself to the image and you reacquaint yourself to the commitment, you step into the realm of power. My God, I'm talking about I'm talking about supernatural power. I'm not talking about just power. I'm talking about supernatural power. Amen. Because God is going to, God's going to, he's he, he going to take you back where you left off at. Woo. He's going to, he, he's going to take you back where you left off at. Then he's going to, he's going to, uh, he's going to, he's going to speed up the time. To catch you up, to bring you up to, to the status of where you, up to, up to the knowledge that you have gained of him since that time. Amen. And just like I said, the fullness of his expressed presence is going to come forth within you under the anointing to lift burdens and to destroy yoke. You, you've been called, what he said in John 14, 12, he said that the works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. What's happening? The image that God placed within you is connecting once again with the character, with the commitment. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The image that God gave you is once again coming in alignment with the character, with the commitment that you that God has given you, then all of a sudden the word is made flesh, and the word is been is coming alive on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. 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 
Amen. So if you're being transformed into the image of Christ, then you are being, then you are becoming more like Christ and uh, and a humble. That means you have to humble yourself. You have to humble yourself, amen, to be to the point of death if, if necessary. Lord, I laid, what Paul said, Father, what Paul said in Galatians 2.20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. He said, I lay my life down for Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In other words, he died to everything that he was from a natural standpoint. And he came alive to everything Christ is from a spiritual standpoint. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And go and go and goes on saying, who loved me and gave himself. Amen. He committed himself to me, for me. Amen. He committed himself for me. Amen. Committed himself what? Committed himself to death for me. He died for me. Hallelujah. He laid down his life for me. Hallelujah. I have a right now because of him. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. So when we come to, when we come to this place, when we come to understand this thing, we know that God is working on our behalf because we are the sons of Almighty God. Don't lose heart. Don't lose sight. Let the transformation continue. Let the transformation continue. Remember the image that God gave you from the beginning. Remember how you felt when you became a born again child of God. Remember the experience that you went through once you said, Jesus, I acknowledge you as my Lord. Come into my heart. Remember how you felt when you first asked Jesus to come in your heart. Amen. That, let that same zeal begin to resurface once again. Let that same desires begin to resurface once again. Because with those desires, with those, 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 those unctions from the Holy Spirit, there was a vision that you had that you had to tell everyone about what happened to you. In other words, you had a testimony that you couldn't wait but to share it. And then when you start sharing it, everybody thought you was crazy. <laughs> Oh, my God, my God, my God. <laughs> Cynthia, glory to God. Amen. When you start sharing it, that's when the people start thinking, what happened if he lost his mind? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We are, we, are, we are in the right place, folks, I'm telling you. We're in the right place. Amen. Glory to God. See, that's why, that's why we don't lose heart through our out, outer self. Amen. Though our outer self is weak, and yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. Hallelujah. That's why we have to hold fast to the image that God gave us. Because you see, to lose to lose sight of that is to begin to decrease, begin to grow old, <laughs> begin to take on wrinkles. <laughs> because you stay in His breast, you're going to stay young. <laughs> Amen. You stay in his presence, you're going you're gonna to stay vibrant. But when you walk away from his presence, that's when the devil begins to work that death in you, the spirit of death. That's when you begin to get all sick. That's when you don't, that's when you don't feel good. Amen. That's when, that's when the, 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 the enemy begins to, uh, to, to try to manipulate you and take advantage of you. Hallelujah. Amen. So we don't want to lose sight of who we are. Amen. We're not wasting away. Amen. Our inner man is being strengthened and being renewed day by day. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. By grace are you saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God gave you the breath of life. He gave you the spirit of life. Amen. When he breathed in your nostrils. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Now we must work out our salvation by walking in the image. 
knowing the commitment that we've made and honoring that commitment. Oh, hallelujah. I had no idea how I was going to bring this message out today. God gave me this message. My wife and I, we were sitting down on the couch uh, yesterday. We were praying. And I said, God, I don't know which way you which way you want me to go with this message for today. And I said, God, last week you gave me the message about uh, the identity. I said, God, what do you want for this week? And right time I time it come out of my mouth, I heard in my spirit the commitment. The commitment. See, and then I just and I and, and, and I and I and I and I went through the I went through, through and I ran I, I, I looked up the definition of commitment and I see the commitment it transformed you into reality it transformed reality what, it, what does it say? commitment is what transformed the promise into reality when I saw that I said oh my god that's it <laughs> I said that's it <laughs> that's it I made my god amen see when I read when I read that, I said, oh my God, that's powerful. Amen. And I and I was up all last night trying to put this thing together. And then by 12 o'clock, I said, oh, I, I said, I got I, it's not it's not sticking. I gotta go, I gotta go to bed. And I woke up this morning and I went back in my office again. All of a sudden, things start popping, things start coming. Amen. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I can deal with it now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. See, you don't you don't never know what how to how the Lord want to do it. But you just got to be willing to follow him. You got to be willing to follow him. Amen. My time is up for today. Amen. Amen. Now, the conclusion of this lesson is, is that the conclusion of this lesson is that being transformed into the image of Christ is also to walk in the character of who he is Amen. in you. Amen. Amen. Because the commitment that you make to him is going to determine the outcome of your Amen. of your life, Amen. of His indwelling presence in your life. So when we make our commitment to serve God, remember the commitment that you made. Don't look at it as you made a mistake by saying it, because the angels cannot forgive you. Amen. Don't try to take it back, because you'll never take it back. Those commitment that you made was from your heart when you first made them. And this is why God is, is, is bringing it to our forefront. We don't want to say, God, I'm going to do this and then all of a sudden, this is too hard for me. I don't want, I don't, I don't want no parts of this. No. You don't want to quit. You don't want to give up. You don't want to throw in the towel. When you make the commitment, stick to your commitment. Sometimes it's, it's, it's hard. Amen. Sometimes it's hard. Be willing to follow him. That's right. Walking through the situations, walking through the circumstances, just like when Jesus told the disciples to get in the boat and go to the other side. He had to face a very difficult time in life. He had to get to his disciples. Amen. But the winds and waves were boisterous. And the ship was being tossed in, in, the, in, the, in the waves in the sea. And Jesus went to them walking on the water. Amen. It's time for you to start walking right in the midst of your storms. It's time for you to not allow your storm, your, your, that there's a raging around you, to cause you to sink. It is time for you to, to start walking by faith and not by sight. Start seeing the vision that God placed within you. Start seeing that vision become to be a reality in your heart and in your life. Amen. And put God to the test. God, you said it. I believe it. And that sells it. I expect that now. Amen. I expect that. Hallelujah. And God will surely bring it to pass. So, so be strong and of good courage. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should repent. Amen. God will confirm his word with signs following. It is only God who is able to keep you from stumbling 
and to present you blameless before the presence of the glory of his glory with great joy. That's Jude chapter 1, verse 24. Jude 1, 24. Amen. And so we got to see what God is saying to us and we got to walk it out, folks. We got to walk it out. God is good. Father, I have declared that what you have placed within my heart for the day. And Father, thank you so much for helping me to deliver this message because I had no idea, Father, how I was going to do it from a natural standpoint. I thank God for the Holy Ghost whom you have sent into the earth to lead us and guide us into all truth and to show us things to come. I thank you for the Holy Ghost, Father. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you for the people that come out today. And I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for those that will that have listened to us, been with us over the internet. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will supernaturally bring us all into the remembrance of our commitments that we have made toward you and your work. Let our commitment transform us to bring that commitment into reality. Let your word become alive within us that as we stand boldly to declare what you have said, that you will confirm your word with signs following. And Father, we thank you and we bless your name because we know that all things work together for good to them that love you and to those who are called according to your purpose. Father, we acknowledge it's in you that we live and move and have our being. It's not in what we can accomplish in ourselves. But it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We give you glory, Lord. We honor you. We thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Say that with me. Say, Jesus. Let that image that you gave man from the beginning begin to resurface within me. Let the commitment that I've made to you from the beginning of my new birth let that commitment become a living reality in my heart. Let the word of God transform that commitment into everything that you created me to walk in. I thank you for it now. I receive it done. Amen. The image that God gave you, God wants to transform that that image is going to transform you that it will become a living reality in your heart. This is what God wants to do right now. He wants your commitment to become a reality. That way you won't give up. You won't lose heart. You won't quit. You won't throw in the towel. You say, Father, you said it. Look what happened, God. God, thank you so much. You kept your word. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's time for us to take our offering up for today. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. It's time to take our offering up for today. Amen. You that are with us by the internet, you want to sow a seed today, please go to my website, LarryBergerMinistries.com. Use your ATM card or your credit card. You know what to do. Just go there and plant your seed. Amen. Go there and plant your seed. Release your faith. And believe, believe that the promise of God will manifest on your behalf. Because God will 
manifest his promise on your behalf. Amen. If those of you are going to be given through the mail system, you want to mail it in, you make your check payable to Ladbroke Ministries. Make your check payable to Ladbroke Ministries. Our New Life in Christ Jesus Church. Church. And that's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Again, that's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. Everybody give the one to give. Father, we thank you for this gift. We thank you for this tithe. We thank you for this offering that you've given today. And Father, for those who sowed that special seed into my ministry and into my very life, Father. Father, I'm asking for a double portion. A double portion, a double portion back into their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, may not this word fall to the ground, but it will produce that which pleases you. Father, I thank you now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I declare bonuses, raises, settlements. I declare supernatural bills paid in full. Bills paid in full, supernaturally. Father, I thank you for a house paid off, cars paid off. Trucks paid off. I thank you, Father, for loans paid off. Father, I declare debt free, debt free, debt free over your people that are supporting this ministry. I give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen, amen. Glory to God. I'm believing for debt free, debt cancellation. Hallelujah. Debt cancellation. Glory to God. Amen. Those of you that are, you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, right now, I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm going to give you that opportunity. You never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. Amen. I know those that are here have already made Jesus Christ Lord of their life, but there may be some of you that are with us by the internet that you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, and you know that if you would die today, that you don't know where you're going to spend eternity. I want you to be sure about your eternity. Don't you want to be sure about your eternity? I know I do. I want to be sure about my eternity, and I want you to be sure about your eternity. If you would die today, where would you go? Amen. If you don't know, then say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come on, say it. Don't procrastinate. Don't put it off. Don't say, I got plenty of time because time is not going to wait on you. Say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Today, as I confess my sin, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Jesus, I believe today that you are my Lord and my Savior, and I receive you as such. Amen. If you said that prayer right now, you have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Old things, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, it declares that old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new, and all things are of God. Amen. Father, I pray for those who said that prayer with me. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let the spirit of transformation begin now in Jesus' name. Let the words that they have spoken become to be a living reality in their heart. Oh, Father, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. If you're here today and you need special prayer, let me go ahead and pray for you right now. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear sister. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continue to rest upon her. I rebuke every demonic force that will work against her health, her mind, her will, her emotions. And I release divine health and healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And I declare it now that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so praying for the family that made that. Your family? Yeah, I'm praying for them 
Amen. 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 Deal with them Amen. right now before I saw no more, especially for him. So he's accepting, but I, I said, I'm not saying nothing more. Yeah. I'm just waiting on the Lord because yeah. he's doing yeah, just, something. Just and I wait know on this whole cause cause him to get sick sometimes. The Lord so God is control. still in control. Amen. When and men know, think they're in control, yeah. they just don't know. And I'm praying, I know you're praying for me. I'll be having a new son in law. Mm -hmm. You know, John. John, his name is John. Okay. So I want him to be coming here to work, to help me work, because he's a worker. So I want him to come. Amen. Where for Amen. Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray, Father, for my dear sister. I pray, Father, that you strengthen her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Father, I pray for her family, Lord yes, God. Lord. And I pray, Father, for her son-in-law. I pray, Father, for yes. her daughters in the name of Jesus. Yes. And God, I'm asking you, Lord God, that you will move in a supernatural way among them. Bringing forth that which you have desired for them, Father. Because it's your desire that we all come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That we all be found, Father, walking in the light of your word. Declaring what you have said. Father, let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Show us your purpose, your plan. And Father, I pray, Father, for this young man that is about to come home. Father, I pray that God that you will be with him, that you will strengthen him, that you will empower him to be a greater witness for you than he's ever been in all his life. Father, I claim every demonic force is rebuked off of him now, and I release the Spirit of God to minister to him right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, let labors into your pathway right now, that his heart will be at peace with you. God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. I declare your whole household saved. I declare your, your children, your grandchildren, your son-in-laws. I declare they all saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. God's gonna, that prayer is coming. Amen. 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 And it's going to be really blessed. Amen. 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 Thought, Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother right now, Lord God. I lift him up before you, Father. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against him prospers, Lord God. And every tongue that has risen up against him in judgment, Father, is condemned already. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that the devil is a liar. He's a liar and a deceiver. And Father, we cancel every word that's been spoken over his heart, over his life, over his mind, will, and emotions. We cancel those words right now in the spiritual realm. And we declare, Father, he that the Son set free is free indeed. Your word, Father, is, is alive within him. And God, we thank you now for a new beginning. We thank you now for a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we declare divine health and healing over him and his family, over him and his family. And God, we just give you all the glory for it right now in advance, in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Father. We say it's done. We say it's done in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Go turn that off back there. Amen. Just a minute. I thank God for each and every one of you that have joined us today. And thank God for the anointing that we experience here today. And I pray that God has spoke to your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that are with us on the internet, Father. I release the anointing of God right now to lift burdens and destroy yokes. Father, let us remember our commitments that we have made toward you, toward the ministry, and let us carry those commitments, Father, even if it hurt us. Father, we realize commitment is a powerful tool that requires sacrifice. So, Father, we, 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 we make a fresh commitment to those commitments. And we thank you, Father, for giving us the ability to carry them out in Jesus' name. God bless you. 
Join us tonight back here at 6.30 Pacific Standard Time here at New Life of Christ Jesus Church. We love you. We have a word tonight that's going to bless your heart. God bless you. Bye-bye.